master frame finite element analysis and master key slab design are ideally suited for doing a raft foundations. Here we have a raft which is in fact for a semi detached house and if I look at the loading you'll see that I have line loads around the edges and across the middle where we're carrying the, the partition and then for an internal wall. And if we look closer at this, just turn off the 3D and we look closer at the properties, um, very straightforward, um, looking at the material surface. First things is it's a 200 slab and it's not a user defined material but a codified material, so concrete C2835 and for deflection cases we're going to go for a short term creep crack sack. So that's my surface. My loading is, as we'd expect, a 2.5 kilonewton load on the surface and then we have line loads for dead and live on all the members or all the line loads and they're all set as alternate loading case so that we can use them with the pattern loading to get a more idealized maximum hugging in these areas because these act as your inverted supports so you're going to be spanning from here to here across across and across so the second thing we do is we go and we look at under loads alternate load patterns. So because it's really one dimensional we will only look at these two and then these two as a pattern which means we can get a max, min, max, min and the max here with the two mins gives me the maximum in our case hugging which we would normally think of as sagging moment on the slab because remember it's in reverse. And the last thing we need is the supports. So we have two static supports, one there and one over there. To stop it moving sideways or twisting horizontally, we've no vertical restraints on this slab. All the restraints are on the surface. So on the surface we've gone for the whole surface to have a vertical spring support and we're using a subgrade modulus of around 10,000 which is either a loose sand or a soft clay. So we're going to go for that com value of subgrade modulus. So let's just analyze this up. Static analysis, space frame and you'll see we have six loading cases because we're using the alternate loading patterns and we go straight into design. So into our concrete slab design and we just set up some basics first of all. 500H steel, top covers 30mm, bottom covers 50mm and then direction is direction 1 is the outer layer and then just say save but in fact let's look at the others. Basic rebar tens at 200 Peak zones will go for a meter, although we shouldn't have peak zones. Strip zones will go for a meter wide initially. And then auto design bars. We will just limit it to the 200 and a double of 200, 400 for any additional or replacement re reinforcement. So we'll just save that. And now the first thing we'll do is we will add a basic set of reinforcement and we'll add it to this surface. We'll see if we've got some warnings but if we now come down here and look at our four capacities we'll get some more information of what's really happening. And I'll come down here and say give me the force capacities, the areas required for the top XX, so that's in that direction and it's all pretty small. We get away with probably 252 uh, except for one or two areas. Look at the top 
YY and we're down to 300 and so we'd probably want to put in a 393 there on the top in the Y that's that vertical direction so no reason why to have different in each direction make them tens of 200 looking at the bottom again we have very little in the Y XX direction the horizontal and in the YY direction we have these areas which we may need to enhance above the 393 so we'll just put down a 393 mesh top and bottom so let's get back to unities and as we can see our basic is tens and tens so what we can now do is say how are we done so let's go and look at the hugging and we'll see that we're all below one and the hugging Y is again all below one so the tens at 200 on the top is satisfactory let's look at our bottom reinforcement and we'll see that in the XX this horizontal direction that's not important in the YY we will see we have overstressing here we have overstressing here for a reasonable amount so we would need to have our reinforcement at least out to here but we'd probably make it a meter wide so that it's two meters overall to be more sensible so what we need to do is just come along up to the top and add in a strip of reinforcement so I'm going to add a strip and I'm going to add the strip as a strip line and I'm going to draw it it needs to know the surface first that surface so I'm now going to draw it from here and we'll just do it over the full length to here and the default is one meter so we could take that down a bit and make it 750 each side which gives us 1500 so if I just grab the middle and come down to 750 and take this and up to 750 and I do another draw and redraw and nothing happening and the reason that nothing is happening is the default is actually for top steel and in fact we want this to be bottom steel so we'll change that to bottom and now everything's whiting out and we'll see that we've put in parallel to the strip and we actually want to go again perpendicular to the strip and that now gives us the additional strength we need and we can see that tens is a lot so we could either go for possibly tens at 400 so every other bar we put an extra bar in and that's coming out sound ten additional tens every 400 and now we repeat the same over here and here so we just come up we add another strip in we choose the surface we ask to draw the component there we are and we do it across here and we'd probably just stretch it a bit by say a meter out just to cover this whole return and again I would consider bringing it down to be only five, 750 or even 500 wide if you want to play very economical one meter long bars and again I would suspect that we would certainly again be bottom steel perpendicular and if we click on that we'll come down and now we've got bars not at 350 but at and that's just enough to reinforce that and finally we add in the third strip associated with this draw from there to there again we'll extend it that one meter and we'll just reduce it down to half a meter either side sorry There we go. 
half meter side and we'll just check the rebar bottom perpendicular expand and now we have our spacing 400 so if we l compress that down and look at our top reinforcement and do our unities on the bottom max so we're looking at all reinforcing areas and we can see that nothing is coming up red and that's us satisfactory so if we just reassess the reinforcement we'll see and we have tens at 200 and then we have tens at 400 plus the tens at 200 which is the basic as our reinforcement on the top in that direction and the bottom in that direction and that is easily exported out to your drawing so I'm going to print the drawing file and we just come along and I'm going to go for basic strip and peak reinforcement bottom and top rebar and I go for 1 in 100 and we're going to go for a DWG and we're going to load AutoCAD and off we go and we export this and here we go with our four layouts of rebar and in our case there's no additional layout required one two three four and there's no punching sh shear rebar because it's not a columned slab so we can see what we've got here we've got our rebar here and then we have nothing special again and then our top reinforcement all detailed out for us. doesn't need to be that detailed because it's a pretty simple slab but if you had a more complex raft then you would have all the zones of reinforcement out for you. It's as simple as that.